Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a new way of writing DAX. Now, if you don't already know about this technique, this is absolutely going to blow your minds. Uh, before we get started, here is a quick announcement. And right after that, we'll get started. Hang tight. All right, quick interruption in the video. Later this month, I am actually going to be doing a live training session on Power BI. And we're going to be focusing on the hard parts of Power BI. We're going to be focusing on Power Query, Data Modeling, and DAX. If you've recently started with Power BI and you have struggled to learn data modeling, Power Query, and DAX in a structured way, and you need my help, you've watched the videos, you've liked the way that I teach, and you'd like to enroll for the session, this is going to be a great learning opportunity. Note that this is going to be a live training session, and if you're the type of person who'd like to sit along with the trainer and you'd like to get your doubts sorted, um, you know, get your doubts clarified as you move along in the training, get some assignments right after the training session, it's going to be a phenomenal learning opportunity. Now, just two more things. There is definitely going to be a last date for the training because we are starting later this month. So check that out. And also, uh, there are 15 seats available and of which five seats have been filled up. So in case you want a spot for yourself, do not wait and just fix up a spot for yourself. That's all about it. And uh, we'll just get started with this video. All right, I'm in Power BI and that's where I have a few tables loaded, sales table, products table, the customers table and a standard calendar table. Now the data model is pretty standard, like a one-to-many relationship, there is nothing too complicated. Let's just try to write a simple DAX statement wherein I'm trying to build some filters right inside my calculate function. And I'm just going to use a very standard way of writing DAX that most of you are very familiar with. So I've already created a blank measure, which is a sales with filter. There is nothing inside of that measure. Let's just write something. So let's just say, then I'm going to write maybe, I'll say calculate. I'm trying to calculate total sales, a measure that I have already created. And I'm just trying to apply a filter, filter for red color only. So I'm just going to say, hey, the color of the product should be equal to RED and close that bracket, commit to the formula. That's a very standard way of writing any calculate statement. I'm sure you're aware about it. The first part of the calculate is the expression or the measure or the calculation. The second part is the filter, right? Nothing too complicated. Commit to the formula, press enter, and once I drag this particular formula to my pivot table, I am going to get uh, what is the sales of, uh, you know, sales with filter red color. Nothing too complicated. Now, here is a new way of writing DAX. So another way of writing DAX is this. So I have say, said that uh, new sales for red, it's another blank measure that I have created, but this way, this time, I'm going to write DAX differently. Please take a look. The first thing that I do is I write total sales as a measure. Now, once I write total sales as a measure, if I just initiate a bracket after that, so if I just start the bracket right after that, it gives me options to apply filters to the particular measure. And if I happen to write just the filter, so I'll just say, hey, the product color is equals to red. This is actually going to give me the same functionality of the calculate function uh, as if I have, would have written the calculate function, but there is no calculate. All that I have written is the measure and the product color equals to red. So let's just commit to this uh, function or uh, this formula and drag that to our pivot table. And let's just see, do we get the same results or not? And yes, we do get the same results. Now I tried to take this approach a little further and try to experiment with it. And let's just take out a few experiments, carry out a few experiments. And let's just see if this works fine or not. So let's just maybe declare a variable here. So I'm just going to say a red filter and I'm just going to maybe say that um, I am trying to filter the products. Let's just say all products and the color here. And I am just trying to maybe get this particular uh, product color equals to red. So what I have done is I have actually created a variable in the variable, I have a table that is getting loaded, but the color that is getting loaded in that particular table is only the red color, right? Now, let's just say that I just do the return here. And instead of writing the explicit filter, I am actually linking it back to the variable. So again, a bracket, because you can see that I would not be able to kind of use that uh, variable if I don't start the bracket. So I have to start the bracket, of course. And once I start the bracket, I, it gives me the options of declaring filters that I would like to declare. So I'm just going to say red and close that bracket, commit to the formula, press enter, and it still is going to give me the same answer. Now let's just go explore this a little more further. So I'm just going to say that as of now, I'm able to apply one filter. Am I going to apply, let's say two filters? Is this going to work with two filters or not? So if I just put a comma here, it just gives me the option of writing more filters, just like the calculate function. So let's just say that I'm just trying to write same period last year of the calendar date. This time it's going to give me the sales of definitely the product red 
but not for the current year for the last year. Let's just format this particular measure and let's just proceed. All right. So total sales in the bracket, two filters, one is for the red color and then is for the same period last year. Commit to the formula, press enter. And what we get now is the sales of the same period last year. Let's just try to validate that. So for the red filter, for the red color, um, current year is 205. And if I take a look at last year for July, it is 362. And that's the number that we get it right here. This seems absolutely correct. All right. The other thing that I want to check real quick is the speed of the two calculations. If I use the non-conventional way of writing DAX by just writing the measure, hitting the bracket and applying the filters in that particular bracket, does it slow down the measure or not? So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I have created two measures. Uh, one was the conventional measure with the calculate function. So that is my measure, which is uh, sales with filter, which is where I'm saying that calculate my total sales for the product color red. And I'm also going to maybe apply the same period last year as I have done in the other measure of the calendar date, close that, commit to that formula. So both my formulas are giving me the same output. Let's just try to test out that do these measures slow down in speed or is there any performance impact of writing the DAX in another way? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two pivot tables. So real quick, uh, and in the first pivot table, I am going to have sales with filter, uh, cancel out this particular measure. In the second pivot table, I'm actually going to have the new way of writing DAX, which is uh, the function and the filters, the formula and the filters. All right, let's just run the performance analyzer. If you just go to the view tab and run the performance analyzer, uh, do the recording and refresh the visuals. You can see that almost both the visuals give me the same speed. So the DAX query is about 12 milliseconds and the DAX query here is about 12 milliseconds. There is no difference in the speed. So it seems okay. Although this data set is very, very small, I haven't really tested this out on a very large data. I was too excited to share this technique with you that I haven't really tested this out on a large data set. But this seems to work absolutely fine. There is no uh, performance uh, issues right here. All right, that was all about writing the DAX in a new way. If this literally blew your mind, and if you did not know about this, uh, you should actually give credit to the place where I learned it from. This was a Twitter feed where I learned this particular technique from. As of now, while I'm recording this video, I can't really recall the name of the person who tweeted this, but I'm actually going to link this uh, somewhere in the description of the video, and also maybe put up a picture on the video, and you can actually take a look at that. Also, Lars Scriber has also written about this technique on his blog post, but apparently this doesn't seem to be very popular. Not a lot of people are writing tax this way. And I also did not know about this. Now that we both know, I am certainly going to use this more often. And let's just try to see the nuances of this technique. Does it make tax easier, faster, better? I'm just going to report that. And you will find me writing this technique quite often in my videos and my other work that I do on DAX. All right, that's all about it. This particular technique, if you have any questions around this, feel free to put down a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a quick shout about my online Power Query course that I'm planning to do later this month, which is where um, you, know, you and I will get together online and this is going to be a live session on Power BI and we'll do a ton of work around Power Query, DAX and data modeling. If you're interested to enroll into this particular program, I'm just going to leave a link in the description of the video and you should actually take a look at that. If you're the type of person who learns a lot better while you're sitting along with the trainer, this is going to be a phenomenal learning opportunity. I have 15 seats available and I believe about seven seats are taken and eight more seats are remaining. So just hurry up. There is definitely a last day for registering for this particular program and you should not miss this out. Well, that's all about it. A new way of writing DAX. Let me know what you think about it in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. Uh, thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.